Okay, so in this video, I'm just going to go through the basics of um, assembling and starting to paint uh, these uh, Games Workshop figures. Um, this is a, a Space Marine that's partially uh, completed. This is my own paint scheme, and uh, I've not quite decided on the name of the chapter yet, but it'll be a made-up chapter, but you can tell the, uh, the difference if I use this. If you look at this shoulder pad here, um, in this squad, it's got a half half black, half white, whereas in uh, and as you can see on all of the so all five of those will have that. Whereas in this squad, they're going to have a a checkerboard design on theirs. That's not essential. That's just my idea um, to have them like that. This is one. This is this was my test piece. He's the uh, the leader, if you like, and uh, he's just slightly more finished than the other ones. I've not decided on the uh, the design to go on this shoulder here yet, but um, as I see, he's got a different colour on his his, uh, his right shoulder. Again, I'm not 100% certain on that yet. So those are the Space Marines. There's more to do as well, but those are the ones I've got done so far. Um, so we'll just move those out of the way because I'm going to show you how to start doing the uh, the chaos ones that's these chaps um, so I've assembled some of these and uh, these are the ones I've got assembled so what I'm going to do I'll move those out of the way again we're going to start with a blank sprue that's this one and I'm going to assemble one of the the uh, the chaos marines I think these are the Nurgle ones and uh, show you how I go about doing it. Now, before you get to this stage, and um, if you're listening and you're Wolf, I've actually already done this for you. You need to wash these in soapy water to get rid of any residue that's on the, the frame. So if you do buy any from, from new, that's what you need to make doing. I'm going to use my side snips and you'll notice that one side is flat and the other side is slanting so you've got to use the flat side against the model okay so i'm going to and this is going to hopefully work uh, if i can get it into focus there we are the flat side now i've marked these with white paint to show which ones i need to cut out uh, you'll have to check on your own as to which ones but i recommend that you only cut out the ones that you want for the particular model that you're doing so this one has got four pieces. So that's the first piece. This is the second piece. Games work, Workshop models especially can tend to have their pieces all over the frame, um, making best use of um, the amount of space that they've got. Obviously be careful with this, that you do cut away the correct pieces. I'm just gonna check this a bit closer. I'm just going to check the other side of that, that piece there. I think that's right if I cut it right up to there. And then we need this piece here. Sorry for knocking the tripod then. So again, I'm using the flat side each time. Occasionally you'll get into positions where you just simply can't do that. Just do the best you can. If necessary, the necessary use two cuts. You have to be slightly careful with this to make sure you don't actually snip the end of your finger. And then the final piece is way over here. Snip this out as well. That's one of the tricky ones there. Get it into the bell without actually might come back to that piece, I've not cut that bit out yet. Without actually cutting the end of the bell off. So for this one, it's it's still attached here. I'm going to cut right through the thicker part of the sprue. Like that, get rid of that now. 
and then uh, this piece here it's now easier to get to this <laughs> Cut that off. So there's still a tiny bit left, but that will do for now. And then you need to assemble the actual piece. Now I'm going to use um, polystyrene cement in different types of this in different ways. The main thing to remember this, the way that this works, is that it melts the actual plastic. So to create a bond, it, when you put it on, it melts a thin layer of plastic. That means if you put too much on it, it will melt the rest of the model and you'll end up with a sticky mess rather than uh, the model that you were trying to get. Now I've got a reference sheet over here. I'm just going to have a quick check of it um, to see how I start to assemble it. And it recommends these two pieces first. So I'm going to test fit them um, to get a rough idea how they go together because it's not um, it's not immediately obvious. In fact, it looks suspiciously like I've got the wrong pieces. Yes, so despite my uh, Great efforts. I've actually cut out the wrong pieces. So I'm just going to go and check which pieces I need and then I'll come back. And in actual fact, I did have the right pieces. I just tried to assemble them in the wrong way. So this piece fits on the other side to what I was trying to fit it on. And it fits into there, in that sort of a position. And then this piece here fits underneath. So I was trying to fit them from the wrong side. I didn't read the instructions correctly. So that that's how it will look. This goes on the back. I could fit that bit on afterwards. So what we're going to do, we're going to glue these two bits together first. So I have a quick look at this and see where the glue itself is going to go. Yep. And then what I'm going to do with this to stop me from making a mistake, I'm going to put the glue not on the figure itself, but into this bottle cap that I've got here. It doesn't matter what you use. It's very quick drying. This It's not like super glue. That's far too much. That blob of glue I've got there. And I'm going to use any stick. This is my scalpel just to put it. And this is purely to ensure that I don't put too much glue on. Because as I say, if you put too much glue on, it will make a mess. So we put that on there. And then we offer up the other piece, hold it together for a few seconds. Now that's not set, but it is enough to keep it in position. And whilst that's going on, I can do the same with this piece. And once again, oops, this piece, be careful with the amount of glue that you put on. You don't need a load. I'm, I'm not using a brush, by the way, because it will ruin the brush. Uh, a stick, a piece of wood, um, cocktail stick, something like that would do perfectly well. And this goes on. It fit on before. You can see the other pieces just come loose. Ah, I can see what's causing the problem. On this piece here, oh, you can see that before, there's a, there's a lump there. So I'm going to use my scalpel, but you could use your snips to try and get this off. What this is doing is stopping it from lying flat. Now, if you do use a scalpel or something sharp, Make sure you don't cut towards your finger. My thumb was below that, so if I'd have slipped, it would have gone that way. Um, that's the piece, so that can go back in. Hopefully you can see that. It's a bit tricky to do this with the camera. 
that's it trying to keep this in camera uh, this piece goes in here that's better okay hold that in position now that was a bit longer than it should have been the glue was getting quite tacky by then um, it's not set not by a long way but it's enough for what we want and then this final piece here this is going to go on the back so I just need to have a look how I think this is going to fit and it's going to be offered up like that. So I'll put a bit of glue on. This should still be suitably uh, liquid. So remember, I put far too much glue on that in that pellet. That is the advantage of the other type of glue, which has a long tube in it. Uh, but the disadvantage to that is that the tube tends to dry up. The glue itself is identical. So that now needs to go on a base uh, and left to dry. And that would take about uh, an hour, maybe, make sure that it's dry. Um, so since that's going to take an hour, here's one that I did earlier. And we're going to start with this one. This is glued on its base and give this an undercoat. This is going to look like this when it's finished. Uh, well, the undercoat. Now many people will, well, virtually everybody will tell you how important it is to do an undercoat first. So an undercoat is a layer of paint to allow the other layers to take hold. This um, is a can, so you would need to go outside with this, spray it, give it a good, good overall coating. This is a green colour, so obviously it's not the one I wanted, but that's what you would do with that. Um, this is what I tend to use. This is a surface primer. Um, you can get them in smaller bottles. Um, this goes on quite well. You just paint this on. It's actually for an airbrush, but it works quite well for these. Uh, you give it a quick coat on with this type of a brush. You can look at the, the bristles on this. You can see that it's a very, very rough brush. That's because it's just giving it a quick undercoat. I'm not going to use either. I'm not going to use either because of the style of I, I want for this, which doesn't really need an undercoat, so I'm not going to give it an undercoat. I'm going to go straight ahead and actually give it um, its first coat of paint, which is has disappeared. Um, I did have it out a few seconds ago. One moment. I'm going to have to stop the film again, come back to this. Right, so I found the paint I want, and I'm going to use this colour. Um, it's not the final colour, this is, this is going to be my first coat, and also my base coat, uh, desert yellow. And uh, I'm going to then, after I've done this, I'm going to use a, an ink wash to go over the top to give it that colour that I want. And the colour what I'm after is, because these are supposed to be uh, mar space marines that have been corrupted by evil and they've gone um, been diseased it's going to be uh, a yellow but streaked in green and slime and you'll see what it looks like when it's finished now I've never tried this so it might not work so I might decide afterwards I'm going to change it so I'm going to do a test one so first of all put my now that was silly because I've put it on my glue I'll get rid of that one. You can use a plate to do this, anything. This will wash off, this type of colour will wash off very easily with water. I'm going to use this bottle cap. And <clears throat> with this, because it's a base coat, you don't want to get it on too thick. Now you can use water to thin this down a little bit. Um, I'm going to use this, which is a medium, um, which is similar to water but it's actually the the medium that the paint uses itself i'm just going to use a tiny bit of this and this will thin it down ever so slightly i don't need a lot there's already a bit in there from the last time i used it um the reason i'm not having it too thick is that i don't want to obscure any of the detail and then with this very rough brush so you don't need to be careful with this i'm painting a long way away from uh, from my eyes because um, I would normally paint much closer but with this it doesn't matter 
and I'm going to give it a quick overall coat. And as I say, you don't need to worry about this. If it goes on your fingers, it doesn't matter. It'll wash off quite easy. Avoid getting it on your um, clothes. I've actually got, as you can see, newspaper down and a cutting mat. Because although, as I say, it doesn't matter about your fingers, it does matter if you get it all over your mum's worktop. And what I'm looking for here is a quick coating. Hopefully I'm not moving it out of the actual lens. Um, so you would choose whatever your base colour is to do this. Uh, if you could afford, the, if you can afford the spray paints, they work a lot quicker, um, and they do give a nice foundation, especially the Games Workshop ones. Uh, but they are expensive. Many people do use things like um, car accessories, paint sprays. I've not had much success with those. They tend to be a bit thicker and um, lose detail. So there we go. So what you're looking for is a nice overall covering. Try not to get any of the small details obscured. Try not to break off any of the small details that are actually on the figure. And again, Games Workshop figures tend to be quite robust. You have to be a bit careful in places. Um, I'm going, trying to go in at different angles to make sure that everything's covered. This is the first coat though. The main thing to watch out with this is that you don't get a huge blob of paint on and it covers up all this fine detail of the figure itself. Now one thing I did forget to say before you do this, an optional step is to um, is to remove. I'm just going to go and wash this. So I've got a small container here that's just got water in it. Give it a rinse out, and you'll notice when you're drying it, even though this is a rough brush and not uh, you see how badly damaged it is, I don't press it in and swirl it round. I just wet it and dry it by pulling it backwards so that the bristles don't get damaged. Now this brush is on its way out. It's only going to be used for things like this, so I'm not taking particular care of it. Uh, if this was your main brush, you would be very careful at this stage and make sure, in fact, I'll show you afterwards how you would treat a real brush. I'll do it now before I forget. So this brush is not a particularly good brush, but it's in a lot better condition than the other one. And I'm just going to wet the end of it and licking it. And then you can see you can get a much finer brush. Now to wash something like this, again, you would put it in your paint uh, water, wash it round and pull it backwards and continue doing that when you've got it completely dried piece of tissue and again pulling it backwards every time so you're not damaging those bristles if you push it forwards the bristles will come apart and your brush will be ruined okay so treat these with care they take a lot they're quite expensive um, my most expensive one, the one that I use the most, and uh, that's this brush. This is a Kalowski. I think that's how you pronounce it. This was £11. And this stays in this tube. And then you can see the point on that. It's a tiny little point. That never loses its point. It's very fine. I use that very just for fine details. And that stays in this container whenever I'm not using it. I had to take it out of camera shot then because I had to get it into the, the end cover. And this stays in here so that it's nice and safe and protected. And it actually get, gets washed 
each time it's used in this, which is a special soap. It looks very messy, but it's a, a soap for brushes. And um, that just shows you really how much care you need to take over your brushes to make sure they don't get damaged. Now, the step I forgot to mention before, and you may or may not be able to do this because you may not have one of these. You could have a craft knife as well to do this. But on many pieces, where the bits join together in the mould, you will get what's called a, a flash line. A very fine line raised up on the edge. And you can use your scalpel to cut those, uh, to scrape those bits off. Now to do this, there is a, a fine line here on this one. Um, and you would scrape up here. It's very difficult for me to show you. That probably is a stage that you can skip out, especially Games Workshop figures, because um, they tend to be very difficult to see anyway, these lines, but it is, it is there. Um, if you are using anything like this, obviously you've got to be very careful with it. These blades are incredibly sharp. Um, be careful with them. You can get normal uh, craft knife one, craft knife ones, which I don't have, so I can't show you one. Um, so that's this one. Now, if you look on the back of this here, see how this hasn't taken very well. That's because it hasn't got an undercoat. As I said, I'm not too bothered over that. And what I'm going to do, that's been drying whilst I've been talking to you, ever so slightly, not a lot. So I'm just going to go over it again with this colour again and hopefully you can see now it's taking the colour a bit better. So you can see how long that took to dry. It's not dry, it just it's tacky. It isn't perfect this, it's not supposed to be. The idea behind this is that it wouldn't be a totally uniform colour. So if you were doing something like a, a Space Marine to get the flat colour, I would recommend an undercoat. If you can't do an undercoat, you need to put two or three layers like this on and maybe leave them a lot longer to dry in between. Um, I'm tempted on this one to allow a bit of the grey to show through underneath because of the, the rough look I want to have the actual model to have when it's finished. And then this final step, that will need washing. That's not dry yet. That's not washed properly yet. That's just enough to stop the paint from sticking whilst I show you this. But, so even with this, I'm going to be washing this again to make it make sure it lasts a bit longer. Um, the final step, is going to be the, the green ink and this is going to bring out the colours hopefully. So what I need for this is another, as I say I use bottle tops, it doesn't matter what you use, um, this is just for convenience, give it a quick shake. Uh, this is an ink, uh, so it doesn't work the same way as the, uh, the paints, it's not thick, a little blob of ink and this is even easier to apply. Same brush. This is a model that I painted about three, four hours ago. And this goes on. So this is a test one. Never tried this before. this uh, particular combination of colours so it may get stripped off and try I might try a different method if I'm not happy with this it doesn't look as what I was expecting it to look like already but one of the things you should be able to see let's just get into these cracks even though I'm pretty certain I'm going to change this um, one of the things you should be able to see on this is that it's brought out the the detail you see how it's run into all the the cracks and gullies
and actually around the face area there probably got a bit too much but that's the beauty of inks you can then after after this is dried this is when you would go in and you would paint all the details of the other bits and pieces on there but to get a quick overall colour if you hear anybody talking about contrast paints that's basically what contrast paints do um, with contrast paints these contrast paints are a games workshop product that's um, quite expensive and um, you paint you spray your model with a games workshop spray and then you just coat it with this with a contrast paint that runs into all the different cracks and gullies and things um, it is probably slightly better than this but um, but for what I want now what I'm going to do now I hadn't planned on doing this what I'm going to do now I'm going to use a, a sepia ink um, because it didn't give me the effect that I wanted whilst it's still wet now there's not often you can do this usually you have to allow your model to dry I'm doing this because I wanted I want this color to look like it's not uniform like it's different in different areas so by doing this it will blend a little bit that's a better effect I want the armor to look old and slightly rotted whoops we've dropped a bit off that'll have to go on afterwards that's where I told you to be careful about the different um, uh, bits and pieces sticking on so that'll go on with a piece of plastic glue that's looking better that's my under lay bottom layer I should say that's um, that's more like the effect I was after so you can still see in places bits of the, the green ink showing through. But you could also see it's come out with that, that blotchy, corrupted looking effect. It's very glossy at the moment, that'll dry a bit darker, but even if it doesn't dry as dark as I want, that bit doing up there, um, at the end it'll be covered in, in a matte varnish which will get rid of all that anyway. So there we go. Um, so after this, you would then need to go in and you'd have to start uh, highlighting the, the chains, the, the mace, whatever it is he's got. Uh, the shoulder pads, and you might put some detail down here, I don't know, I've not decided yet how I want my uh, Nurgle Marines to look. Uh, but you would, you can go in, but that's the effect I was after at the beginning where you've got this greenish hue coming through, this rotting kind of colour showing through the armour. So that'll get you going on the basic outline of, of your your marines and then you can start to put the colours on afterwards so obviously this is the main you have to choose this to be the main one these by the way were done in a different style these have got flat colours painted on and um, what I haven't done yet is put this highlight on so what I will do now I'll just do the uh, you can see that the bluish areas um, and I'm going to stop the uh, Oh no, I've got some here. I was going to get some. This is my blue ink. Now this is this is the contrast paint I talked about. Um, the main difference, I suppose, really is the price. This is getting on for five pound, and that's two pound fifty. Um, this isn't as strong, which is why I'm going to use it now. If I was to put this on this figure where I'm going to put it now, I'd, it would make it very dark. This I'm hoping won't be as dark so I'm going to find another bottle cap and I can't use the same brush this time because if I was to use this brush 
it's too big I know I've not washed it yet but it's too big it would cover everywhere else as well so what I'm going to do instead just give it a quick wash wash it will need more washing afterwards just to stop the paint from drying too much I'm going to use a smaller brush similar to that but an old one so that here we are so that it doesn't actually spread everywhere and I'm going to just try to and this is very difficult for me to do because I'm painting at a distance I would normally be much closer in but by putting the ink on here it will hopefully bring out um, bring out the colours I'm not going to do the whole thing a lot of this needs will be repainted anyway but I'm just going to go around uh, the main arm a bit here and possibly I'm not going to do the, the, the helmet because I need to get in close to that so I can't really show you that on the, the camera When I say getting close, I mean I need to get it very close to my uh, to my eyes so I can see what I'm doing. Um, these bits are a bit um, easier to show, but there you go. So that that's only the start of the uh, the undercoat layer. Uh, let's see if I can get that closer. And hopefully you can see the difference there between where I've added the ink and if you look at his feet where the ink isn't added you can see how it brings out the detail you can if you want then go over after again with um, the paint color uh, but this this video is just to get you started to give you a basic idea of how you can use inks to bring out colours uh, if you get it wrong you can always start again uh, as long as you've not put the paint on very very thick as you can see that's the sort of thing you can do okay right hopefully that's a starting point for you um, I'll let you get on and good luck with that.